We're going to continue in Deuteronomy. If you would turn to chapter 8 and look with me at verses 18 to 20. And after this time of giving, our brother Josh is going to come up and pray. Deuteronomy 8, 11 to 20. Beware that you do not forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments, his judgments, and his statutes, which I command you today, lest, when you have eaten and are full, and have built beautiful houses and dwell in them, and when your herds and your flocks multiply, and your silver and your gold are multiplied, and all that you have is multiplied, when your heart is lifted up and you forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage, who led you th through that great and terrible wilderness in which were fiery serpents and scorpions and thirsty land where there was no water, who brought water for you out of the flinty rock, who fed you in the wilderness with manna which your fathers did not know, that he might humble you and that he might test you, to do you good in the end. Then you say in your heart, my power and the might of my hand have gained me this wealth. And you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swore to, to your fathers as it is this day. Then it shall be, if you by any means forget the Lord your God and follow other gods, and serve them and worship them. I testify against you this day that you shall surely perish. As the nations which the Lord destroys before you, so you shall perish, because you would not be obedient to the voice of the Lord your God. So we're continuing in Deuteronomy, and you see again this theme of not forgetting I was, as I was thinking about this passage, I was reminded of my life before my salvation. I was what some would call a crisis Christian. If I had a crisis, I'd call out to God. And once things got better, I'd go on about my life as if I had no need for God. that propensity to forget God doesn't entirely go away at conversion, sadly. God's people today, including myself, sometimes go about life all too forgetful of God's covenant and blessings. And the same was true of the covenant community here, uh, to whom God, through Moses, was speaking in this passage. And we need the same reminders that we see in these verses. So let's look at them more closely. One way of looking at this section of Deuteronomy is that this chapter is part of a larger section, chapters 6 through 11, that together form an exposition of the first commandment. And the warning in verse 11, beware that you do not forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments, ties in very directly with the first commandment as the warning is echoed in verse 19. If you by any means forget the Lord your God and follow other gods and serve them and worship them, I testify you against, I testify you against, I testify against you this day that you shall surely perish. So then we see in the, in the verses in the middle there the, the blessings, the future blessings of abundant food, beautiful homes, expansive herds, significant wealth, all of which would be theirs in the promised land, will tempt them to forget God, Moses warns. And that would be exactly what would happen. But Moses then says, he reminds them, when that day comes... They're to remember all that God had already done for them, brought them out of bondage through the awful wilderness where even there he met their needs and humbled them for their own good. 
They are not to forget God, as we see in verse 17, lest you say in your heart, my power and the might of my hand have gained me this wealth. And that's, in a way, a sort of a drum roll, if you will, for the main point for us this morning in verse 18. You, and you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant which he swore to your fathers, as it is this day. Here's the point. It was through the nation of Israel that God would fulfill his promises to the people of God and their prosperity was to be one of the means by which his purposes would be served. One commentator put it this way, the gifts God gives us, whether wealth or talents, are not for our sakes, but for the sake of his covenant. The goal of life is not our enrichment, but the kingdom of God. Our wealth, in other words, was given to us to be used for his purposes, to advance his kingdom, and to spread the good news of the gospel. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for the duty and the blessing of worshiping by giving which helps us to not wickedly forget that every good thing we have comes to us by your hand and that we're to use these good things for your glory. Amen. Amen.